I would like to thank the distinguished chairwoman from New York for yielding. Mr. Chairman, I rise today to urge my colleagues to support a piece of legislation to enhance two critical Small Business Administration entrepreneurial development programs, the Small Business Development Centers and the Service Corps for Retired Executives. Serving as the representative in a district that has historically driven, been historically driven economically by vibrant local small businesses, I greatly appreciate and support the entrepreneurial development assistance that the SBA provides. We know that entrepreneurial development programs work. Businesses who receive SBA entrepreneurial assistance are twice as likely to succeed. And for every federal dollar spent on entrepreneurial development, seven dollars are generated in increased tax revenue. But in the past three years, due to changes in our ever-changing globalizing economy, my district has lost 607 small businesses and one out of five manufacturing establishments. This is a trend that I am committed to reversing through fostering entrepreneurial development and creating the right set of conditions to help businesses flourish, stay, and be attracted to my district. And I believe that supporting effective small business entrepreneurial development programs is a key part of that strategy. In 1980, Congress established the SBDC program to foster economic development by providing management, technical, and research assistance to current and prospective small businesses. As you know, SBDCs provide services which include assisting small businesses with financial, marketing, production, organizational, engineering, and technical problems and feasibility studies. SBDCs serve Americans with a desire to start their own venture but who lack the technical expertise associated with starting and running a successful business. And in the past decades, SBDCs have provided assistance to millions of entrepreneurs across America. The SBDC program also represents the effective and efficient use of allocated federal monies through public-private collaboration. To that end, SBDCs are funded by matching monies provided by state legislatures, fund foundations, state and local chambers of commerce, public and private universities, vocational and technical schools, and community colleges. In fact, sponsors' contributions have been increasingly exceeding the minimum 50 percent matching share, signifying greater participation among such groups and institutions. This is why I feel especially fortunate to have spe several small business development subcenters located at local universities, such as Widener University and the University of Pennsylvania, which provide critical business resources and technical assistance to small businesses in and around my district. I would like to stress that the core SBDC program has been extremely effective, but there are certain operational improvements that can be implemented to increase the flexibilities of SBDCs. To that end, changes proposed in this legislation will ensure the quality of grant recipients to host SBDCs, help SBDCs maintain their autonomy from undue SBA interference, protect the confidentiality of SBDC clients, ensure that taxpayer dollars are being spent as efficiently as possible by not using SBDC funds except for the sole purpose of business development, and allowing exemptions to the current cap on non-matching portability grants in the event of federally designated natural human-caused disasters. In addition to these operational changes, it is important to strengthen the SBDC core program, which successfully navigates entrepreneurs in managing their business by establishing specific grant programs that will allow SBDCs to tailor their services. For instance, the Capital Access Initiative would establish grants to assist entrepreneurs in processing loan applications and attaining private equity. An Innovation and Competitive Initiative would establish grants to allow SBDCs to become technology centers to help market technologies and advance projects to manufacturers. A Disaster Recovery Program would establish grants to allow SBDCs to assist and coordinate the federal response to small business disaster victims. An Older Entrepreneurial Assistance Program would target older Americans interested in transition to become business owners, while the Small Business Sustainability Initiative will promote the development and implementation of energy efficient and clean energy energy improvements and technology. And an affordable health care initiative will help small business owners provide affordable health care insurance options to their employees, as the chairwoman mentioned. As I also spoke about, a second program which this legislation will address is SCORE, which provides entrepreneurs with free counseling assistance by former executives. SCORE provides a valuable service to small businesses, and I believe it will be even stronger with the provision to actively recruit volunteer mentors who will then provide a greater reflection of the social and economic diversity 
who will utilize SBA services, such as women and underrepresented minorities. I urge all my colleagues to support this important bill, which will greatly enhance the business development resources available to America's small business owners and aspiring entrepreneurs. And I yield back the balance of my time.